Just got to the late break show, um, just about 10 o'clock. Look at all these awesome cars that have arrived. What an eclectic mix. Everyone seems to be using that word at the moment. I'm gonna use it, why not? Slow the Lotus up here, uh, Morgan, the uh, Toyota Alphard uh, Chartered Support Vehicle, of course. Porsche, DR Yaris, a few uh, retro beasts over here. Oh wow, is that a Citroen BX? So yeah, some very cool cars here. Now I'm going to go into the main part of the show. You're going to see some pretty cool things. It's got Johnny Smith and Ed China is the special guest. So yeah, it should be pretty awesome, really. So I was just walking around the Lake Brake Show and uh, spotted this wonderful green Mini and uh, didn't have an engine in the front. And as you can see, it's got a uh, Tesla small drive unit in it and uh, John built it for uh, the business which is specialist components uh john tell me about the mini i mean you know where did it all come about how come you made it? it we've always wanted to do an electric mini but we weren't ready to do it until the technology was there where we could uh, get the performance get the range get the reliability yeah um so we started this project two about two and a half years ago and the ethos behind it was it had to do what the mini did in the 60s but do it today yeah and be electric so it had to have the performance, the range, the quality, the refinement. It's definitely so got the quality. Off. I mean, it looks absolutely yeah. outstanding. Notice you've got the small drive unit Tesla. That's it, yeah, small drive unit. And how, how tricky was it to pop in the back there? Hey, luckily, we do a lot of reverse engineering. So we scan, scan the car, Yep. got a CAD model of the uh, small drive unit, mm, brought the two together, yeah. realized it would work, and then built the rear frame and suspension around that. And so some, it wasn't too tricky for me. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I wouldn't know where to start, but <laughs> something that uh, you mentioned on the uh, small drive unit, which was very close to my heart, is the fact that you've got a Quaif limited slip diff there is in there as well, which there. is, you know, that is something that, you know, really is close to my heart in terms of, I hate a bit of one wheel peel. Yeah, doesn't, you know, do, doesn't do anything, does it? There's no point making a one when you can make an 11. Exactly. Um, and uh, what, what else, in terms of the actual build, I mean, what uh, what charger have you used? Yeah, it's and, a seven kilowatt charger, yeah. onboard charger. It's running all Thunderstruck um, BMS system in it. Right, where have you put the Thunderstruck BMS? So the BMS, BMS. so the, there's two battery packs, one battery pack in the car, one battery pack in the front of the car. Yeah. So they're two independent, two independent systems. So one BMS system is in the battery pack in the rear of the car. Right, okay. And then one BMS system for the front back is in that box there. Right, okay. So in this box. Yeah. Here. And um, you mentioned when uh, you were explaining the build, you've got two battery boxes, haven't you? Two battery packs, yes. Um, so there's the one battery bo uh, packs and box, which is there. That's right. And then the one that was in the centre console, is That's that right? right? In the centre console that runs down the car. So just in here as well. That's right. And uh, I, I mean, I love the controls. Is it something that you guys have done bespoke for the car? It's something we've used before from a company called CarTech. Yeah. Um, which is all uh, all solid state. So it means that each switch is a switch, a fuse, and a relay. Okay. And you can sort of um, program how you want them to work, whether it's momentary latching or permanent switching. Yeah. So they're very versatile and it cuts down on wiring. So on one tiny little unit, there's a switch, a fuse and a relay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, CarTech have do fantastic kits for aftermarket uh, and the wireless controls for the steering wheel is the same. Yeah, when you said the wireless controls on the steering wheel, sorry, let me go and go in there again. I mean, that was absolutely, I was, I was staggered when you mentioned that. I mean, Obviously didn't think that that was a thing, but no, you know, anything's yeah. possible these days, isn't it, with Bluetooth yeah, and stuff? And, yeah, exactly, and it comes from um, competition cars. You used to have controls on the wheels and lots of tangled wiring hanging beneath them. Ah, uh, right, so yeah. So when they pulled the steering wheel off, all the tangled wiring sort of came with them. So they developed it for that market, so the steering wheel comes off with the controls to once there's no wires in it. So that's what, they did, what drove that market quite a few years ago now, but it's only now in, you know, it's filtering into the aftermarket. And I, I hope Moggy won't mind me saying from Electric Classic Cars, your uh, co colour combination and the uh, everything inside is... I actually much prefer this, to be <laughs> honest. 
hopefully the, well I'm actually putting this on YouTube so hopefully you will or hopefully you won't see it but anyway yeah, but we, um, we get him with Richard I hope he's alright oh good yes yeah lovely chap lovely chap met him last weekend great guy yeah, cool. and um, what's the actual battery uh, battery pack size that you've used on the car so they're L LG chem batteries yep um, mainly because of the the, the packaging we have to live with and their power density yeah so they're just over 60 volts each 2.6 kilowatt hours so it means we've got six packs in the front six packs in the car yeah gets up to 390 volts and 35 36 kilowatt hours okay so um it was really the only packet at the battery pack at that point that would work with this small car and you was it 45k for the actual ev conversion yeah for the electric parts on the floor yeah so drive motor all of the batteries all of the bms system the charger dc dc controller and things is about forty-five thousand. okay and um in terms of the actual range of the vehicle, what what range of the, um, have you have you been testing it yet? Not yet. You'll be testing it soon on a, on a on a closed test track, but it should do about 140, 140 miles at a steady cruise. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty pretty good stuff. I mean, uh, we thought if you can get from uh, East Anglia to the Midlands in a, in a mini without some for charging, is about right. Yes. <laughs> and uh, what is it? A Type Two charger. Type Two charger. Type yes. Two charger. Yeah. No, that's it's very impressive. I absolutely love it. Really, really do. Uh, it's given me a, f a few ideas for the uh, the TVR build. I must admit. So, uh, especially, you know, form over function. Um, I love these wheels. They look epic. Kind of Lancia Delta esque. That's it. Bit um, D type, bit integrale, bit of two or five. That's it. That's it. And uh, are you, uh, I think you mentioned you were going to be at the caffeine and machine that's show right. yeah the weekend of 25th of this month yeah i'm hoping to yeah looking to go there on sunday as well but thank you very much john that's right, and uh, yeah i will uh, hopefully see you soon see you there all the best all right good man here i was walking along and saw the audi badge and then i saw the nissan leaf motor and stack look at that look at the quality in there Odd motos, see build on YouTube. I'll be checking that one out. This looks properly tidy. I haven't got a clue what Audi model it is. Let's have a look. It's an auto union, which is one of the rings of the Audi. EV conversion, Nissan Leaf motor battery, Chevy Volt, DC to DC charging, imported from South Africa. It was a three cylinder, two stroke engine, lasted 12 miles before it blew up. Oh, well, he's definitely gone the right way, electrifying it, isn't he? This looks immense. quality of the uh, paintwork is pretty awesome. Like I said before, uh, if no one knows, Auto Union is one of the rings of the uh, Audi badge, along with four others. Can't remember what the other ones are. Hurst, maybe? Audi? and. Who knows what the other one is? Can't remember. Look it up on Google. Google is our friend. Let's have a look at the controls. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. I love the places that you see stuff. Just looks fairly standard in there with a couple of random coloured buttons. Awesome. Love it. Uh, my uh, jaw just dropped the ground, uh, dropped to the ground on this Model S estate. And uh, I'm with Dorian here, the uh, maker of the said beast. Dorian, what made you want to? do this I mean what have you done <laughs> <laughs> well we've created a, a shooting brake version or a state car in English terms of the uh, Model S and we went about doing this for a, a specific client who had a requirement for two dogs Labrador and a Labradoodle okay yeah to uh, sit in the back and uh, as all great ideas do it started in the pub ah that's where 
yeah, dreams are made of, and uh, yeah, dreams are created. Yes. Maybe not uh, made though. No, not no. after a few beers. No, no, a few, well, once you've had a few beers, then the wacky idea of oh. cutting up a ninety odd thousand pound car <laughs> doesn't seem so bad. We're always so creative in the pub, aren't we? <laughs> So uh, yeah, we decided it would be a good idea and um, went about uh, designing a, uh, a estate model or variant of yeah. the S uh, so that it could be retrofitted uh, through the classic British terminology of oh, coach building. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're the greatest at coach building in this country, I must admit. Um, Dying industry, sadly, though. Oh, well, hopefully when, uh, you know, chaps like you do things like this, it, it you know, kickstart it again. And uh, I believe you mentioned that Tesla know about this and you've got permission in a way yes so we, we we thought before chopping up one of their prized possessions it might be a good idea to engage with them so that we could uh, at least understand the rules of engagement <laughs> uh, we would heard tell that uh, you could turn off the cars remotely and all yep. the rest of it and we didn't want that happening so uh, yeah we popped across to Nevada and had a chat with them and um, oh you went all the way to oh wow yeah, yeah, awesome we went actually to the uh, Reno. The, this is wow. Reno yeah so we went and saw the near the Salt Lake Gigafactory. City factory Wow, okay, that yeah. That was a fantastic night out, I will say. <laughs> uh, but uh, nevertheless, um, there was three sort of requirements that had to be made, which was uh, don't play with the crash structures, don't play with the electronics, uh, the safety systems and so on, and don't bring the brand into disrepute. Absolutely and, not. And uh, we went ahead and designed it. Now, it all comes about because of the team of people that we brought in to do it. So, uh, engineering director is a world legend in automotive terms, Jim Rauter. He penned it and designed it and engineered it. Okay. Uh, and uh, his son, who was involved in the assembly, we had some really good trimmers, we had some really good uh, companies involved in, in the manufacturing. So, yeah. Pilkington Glass, they provide all of the glass works and the mold tools for the glazing on this. Yeah. Everything is e-marked. Everything is, sta is, is British standard or European standard or federal standard. So we can do wow. this as a legit car. It's yeah. a production ready vehicle. Uh, this example here is the prototype, it's the one-off, it's a unicorn. Yeah. And um, it is now six years old as a car. Yeah. And it's three years old as a conversion. It's a three, wow, really? Can you open the you. tailgate Absolutely. for us? I, I'm, I'm amazed that uh, I've not heard or seen it before, the fact that it's three years old as well. And I mean, we can see the- You are actually, I forgot about COVID. <laughs> carbon fiber well, four years old now actually and something that i was amazed at is the fact that you said this is lighter yep. than the standard model yeah so when we started the, the project off obviously weighed up the car and jigged it and checked what the dimensions were and by the time we finished we did the same process again it was 12 kilos lighter than the original donor car wow wow that is seriously impressive yeah and um is what was the hardest thing about the conversion the whole project <laughs> That's a big one. Um, <laughs> you know, the interesting thing is, uh, we the aluminium body of the Tesla, yeah. they obviously are a development car, and I won't say bad things about that, but in effect, there are ver variable qualities yeah. coming off the production line at Tesla. And that isn't a reflection of uh, them being a bad car per se. No, no, absolutely. It just means that perhaps different cars at different times of the day might have had different tolerances. So we 3D scanned two cars and found differences in that. And so when we build our, mod, our uh, customization panels, the yeah. mold tools, we had to bring in those tolerances within those uh, mold tools and the components so that when we jig it and fit it, each time it fits perfectly. So wow. Okay. That's a lot of development time. Yeah, that's that's a. I mean, that's a great idea. I mean, and look at. I mean, the space in here is. Yeah. So you've got another seven point four cubic feet of space. You've got three inches of extra headroom in the back for the rear passengers. Um, none of the crash structure has been affected at all. Yeah. And um, none of the electronics. In fact, uh, on the accessories uh, CAN bus system, we've actually got a rear wash wipe, which you don't get on a Tesla. Oh, of course. Ah. So, uh, uh, everything is carbon fibre that we've added to the car. Yeah. And it's bonded using 3M's aerospace uh, epoxy, which is a we had to do training courses for and all the rest of it so they could be aluminium to carbon fiber bonding just yeah. as they do aircraft nowadays that, that was my next question so you've beat me to it yeah. thank you very much <laughs> um but no thank you very much for bringing it over and um yeah it's uh it's amazing but have you oh have you got any plans to do any other cars well we we what? do other stuff as well oh, everyone's got please jobs. plug away plug uh, away we, we do anything from uh, ev conversion work through to restoration of vehicles within our group yeah so 
whatever is required. A true British craftsman of automotive terms. We and, can do it. And who the should be look out? Brand, Q West, West brand right? Yep. Is the one for the electric vehicle coach building. Fantastic. Well, I will very much be looking into and uh, out for more of these things from you guys. And yeah, please uh, have a look at Charge Heads UK and check out the uh, TVR wedgie. Brilliant. Look forward to seeing it. Good man. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's amazing what you can find when uh, you wait for things to pack away. It's a party of Citroen 2 CVs. One electric, one ice. The 007 special. <laughs> With the, the uh, lovely ball bars here. That's, that's what I'm talking about. For your eyes only. only I, saw, I saw you enjoying uh, using the seats earlier, watching the late break show live. Yeah, <laughs> How's she running? She's oh, purring. She's running good, yeah. I put new carb on it on Tuesday and just set it up literally this morning. So have you had a race with the uh, the 2C EV yet? I haven't. No? Uh, other people have apparently ever said. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen Well, I, I, reckon, I reckon yours looks better. I, I, like, I like the tattoos. Yes, I, I like the, character. Yeah, the scratches. And, and the 007 uh, yeah. stuff is pretty cool. Yeah. Love it. Oh look, it just so happens to be a charge heads air freshener still. So we've now got an opportunity of seeing the 2CV, sorry, 2C EV, it's such a mouthful, 2C EV in motion. That wheel's looking a bit wonky, here it goes. <laughs> Cheerio. And then we've got the authentic noise in the background. Off they go. So it's the end of uh, the late break show and I've seen some really cool cars here. I managed to get some good uh, video and a couple of good interviews um, and one that was very interesting which may help or perhaps hinder the build, we'll see. Um, but yeah, everyone's kind of pack packed up and gone now so I'm um, going to eat the rest of my cold peach that I got earlier and uh, yeah, I'm going to skidaddle in the uh, Alphard. Yep, still here thankfully. I just left it here with the uh, everything on. So everyone's been very kind, but here she is. A few people took some uh, air freshness, which is good. She is looking very unelectric. Anyway, I better pack up, but thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you for the next one.